What's up, my wizards? It's Dev from SBMTG on the YouTube.com. Down there, we like magic. You know by now. And the last time we did a video, I asked you at the end which deck you'd like to see more. Mono white mid-range deck I've been working on or mono red mid-range deck I've been working on. And the red deck not only won, it beat the white deck by 3-1 to one, with some people commenting they've been wanting to see this deck since, like, Kaladesh came out. So, you finally get your chance, and I've been working on the deck for about that long myself, actually. I finally get to show you Big Red today. Well, Big Red is a deck that it seems like there's a little bit of hype behind at the beginning of nearly every standard season. This one's no exception, you know. For the last couple of sets, we've seen some decent cards in red, and all of us have thought for just a moment that maybe Big Red has what it takes. Amon Ket is no different. We saw some really good stuff like Glorybringer and Sweltering Suns in this set, not to mention a couple of other cards, and it might finally be time for Big Red to be a thing, especially in this format where we have a couple of good matchups against important decks. So, with that in mind, let me go ahead and show you the list here. And usually I would start with the creatures and then do the instant sorceries, all that. With Big Red, we're just going to move through the curve card by card regardless of type. Now there's two one-ofs in this main board here, and they're both at opposite ends of the curve. So I'll start with the one on the lower end of the curve, and we'll talk about the Silver Bullet Dragon Master Outcast for just a second. I just think it's important to pack at least one copy of this guy, because although he is fragile, we're looking for the game to go a little bit long, and after the opponent has expended most of their resources, it's nice to top deck a Dragon Master, play it, and get a dragon or two or even three out of it sometimes, and just finish the game off with your one mana guy. Totally happens. I don't want to go too crazy with them though I think that one copy is fine I'm definitely not gonna play three or four copies I don't want to see him that often especially in the early game but just the one copy is fine sometimes we'll top deck him and then outcast will come down and put some stank on you you see what I did there we are gonna play another one drop creature that I'm totally fine seeing on turn one and that is the whole play set of soul scar mage in the deck despite the fact that soul scar sort of sounds like a lame 90s alternative band this is deceptively one of the best cards in the whole deck we've got like 17 different instants and sorceries that can hit creatures for damage all of which, obviously, works super well with SSM. So that's cool. Plus, we've got like Glorybringer and some Planeswalkers and all kinds of stuff that are sources we control that deal non-combat damage. So just well over 20 cards that work with Soul Scar in some capacity. And the prowess is nice. I already mentioned we got 17 instants and sorceries. We got Planeswalkers in the deck. So plenty of things to activate the prowess on this guy, too. Just probably the best pure power one drop that we can play right now and I looked into pretty much every red one drop and this is the best one I could find especially in terms of longevity which is what Big Red is all about. While we're still in the one drops here I'm gonna play four whole copies of Magma Spray and Two copies of Shock. Yeah, I'm still playing Shock. I know we don't have to worry about cat combo anymore, and Shock was one of the better tools against it, for some decks at least. But I'm still willing to play Shock, because it can take out Crypt Breakers and nearly every other creature before turn three from Zombies, so that's at least important. There's the Red-White Humans deck that's running around. This can take out Rogue Refiners and stuff against Team or Marvel. There's a bunch of stuff that Shock takes out right now, and it's damage to the dome when you need it for just one mana. You know? Sometimes you're trying to squeeze a couple of plays into one turn, get as many prowess triggers off Soul Scar as you can, and if you got a Soul Scar, Shock gets even way better. So, usually Shock would look a little underpowered, but obviously, honestly, right now in this format, it's still a perfectly fine card. And Magma Spray, even though it can only hit creatures, it's just incredibly valuable against all the zombies in the format, especially things like Relentless Dead and um, Dread Wanderer, stuff that comes back, you know, Scrap Peep Scrounger, it comes back. Well, not with Magma Spray, which is a pretty important card. That is also something that we can sort of just sandwich in on top of other plays that we might make in a turn to get extra prowess triggers off of Soul Scar or whatever we're trying to do. So, just really important, I think, to at least play the playset of Magma Spray, but I'm going to go all the way and play six one-mana things that deal two damage. And by the way, the reason for doing that is because I think Big Red is much safer not playing too many creatures on the low end of the curve because honestly, it doesn't really have that much power at one and two drop right now. It just kind of doesn't, you know? Um, but we can sort of make up for that by playing a fair amount of removal on turn one and two, keeping stuff off the board, and getting into turn four and five when we can play our really, really big stuff. So I think it's important to play some stuff like this that keeps stuff off the board in the early turns. And to that effect, we'll really hammer 
at home by playing four whole copies of Harness Lightning and four copies of Incendiary Flow. Now, Incendiary Flow might be sorcery speed, but I'm actually not that worried about it. This also takes out all the zombies that we fear might come back from the dead one day, you know, Relentless Dead, Dread Wander, all that stuff, Scrap Heap Scrounger as well. Even though it's not a zombie, it's sort of an honorary member of the zombie club. So, you know, and all of these, the, you know, both Harness Lightning and Incendiary Flow can take out three toughness creatures, which is important because Dire Graph will usually come in with three toughness if there's already a Dread Wanderer in the graveyard. Um, Lord of the Accursed, which I said right this time. Video the other day, I said Lord of the Undead like every time. Lord of the Accursed, either one of these can take out as well. You can obviously take out Whirler Rogue, you can take out Rogue Refiner, you can take out almost anything in Red White Humans, you can take out a bunch of stuff in Tokens decks. So just both of these are invaluable. And Incendiary Flow can go to the Dome. That's important too, you know. Um, if we might sometimes have an extra energy off of uh, Ether Hub, that helps out our Harness Lightning. And yes, there's a reason why we might want to play Ether Hub. I'll get to that in a second. If you weren't counting, that is 14 different spells at just one or two mana that can keep critters off the board in the early game and work with Soul Scar Mage. Important to point out. But we're actually not done yet. I've got one more big burn spell at three mana, and that is the three whole copies of Sweltering Suns we're going to play in the deck. Well, Suns is actually one of the big payoffs for not playing that many creatures at one or two mana. We won't be sweeping ourselves very often with this card. And it's important to note, by the way, that on like turn four or five, if we can play a one or two mana spell and then a Sweltering Suns, then our Soul Scar Mage will survive. It's important. But the number one reason we're playing the card in the deck at all is because it can wipe not only all the zombies off the board, but also that smug look off your opponent's face when they've got a board full of zombie tokens and such, you know? And it has the added benefit of working out against all the other aggro decks in the format, plus like Thopter tokens that Whirl Rogue has generated, like you'd be surprised the amount of times that you need Sweltering Suns. But if you don't need it, it's also card draw, which is welcome in this deck. We don't have a whole lot of ways of drawing cards, so if this is dead, we're playing against control, whatever, or just the board state isn't right at the time. This can just be a drawn card, which is great too. Okay, so with that, we've made it out of the Forest of Burn that I feel like we have to play in this deck, and we've made our way into the real threats. Everything else in the deck is a creature or a Planeswalker, and we'll start with the two copies of Pia Nalar. Well, Pia may look unassuming, but she's a Swiss Army knife, man. She fulfills so many roles, ties a bunch of different ends together and stuff, you know. She's a three-mana card that helps bridge the gap between our one- and two-mana stuff and our four- and five-mana stuff, and she just has so much functionality, you know. You play Pia, you go wide immediately, you get a creature with flying, that's awesome. You get a mana sink, so she's a great top deck, and you, can, like, sacrifice her own Thopter and get through a glory bringer or something just like all the stuff that she can do is really nice and later on in the game sometimes she's just a great mana sink to like go ahead and pump her own thopter to like four power it happens and on top of all of that she's yet another piece that helps us get into those later turns you know we're really comfortable operating in turns four five and six so pia can come down and be two chump blockers one of which flies it can be a little tough to get through that so pia just does everything in this deck and i definitely want to play at least a couple of copies but onto the four drops and get ready for the baddest mamma jamma in the deck two copies of chandra torch of defiance and if we had a couple of extra bucks i'd probably go ahead and main deck three of these but she's easily the most expensive card in the deck and i'm trying to although this isn't necessarily a budget deck i'm still trying to keep the price away from the outrageous range so i don't want to play all of the chandras but She's obviously one of the best four drops the deck could feasibly play. Just look at all the stuff she does. You know, she's card advantage. Said it before, it's something we really don't get a lot of in this deck. We'll take all the card advantage we can get. She has virtual card advantage, so that's pretty sweet. First ability is nice. She can create mana if we need it. That can be useful sometimes. She can just bust a creature. That's always good. And if you happen to get to her ultimate, you can survive a couple of turns. You're going to win. <laughs> It's just all there is to it. So Chandra just obviously deserves a spot in the deck. If we're building a big red deck and we're trying to make it as good as possible, Chandra's just got to be in there. I know Chandra wasn't too surprising, but a four drop that might surprise you legitimately is the four of Thought Not Seer in the deck. Yeah, I'm doing it. And I know that I've probably got some splaining to do as to why I played this card. The number one reason we are playing this card at all is because on the play, we can get an Aetherworks Marvel out of their hand. And it only works on the play, but that's worth it enough to play the card. Our matchup against Aetherworks is pretty bad. There's not a whole lot that we can do about it. Even post-board, 
in this color. And yeah, I know that Thought Knot isn't technically this color, but with minimal effort, we can get a Thought Knot out on turn four. And it's really, again, the only actual option that we have of getting rid of an Aetherworks either before they play it or before they can spin it. In this case, before they can play it. So, got to play the card, in my estimation, because it's the only thing that helps out that matchup at all. But aside from just that tech reason to play it, it's still a 4-mana 4-4 four four that gets in a really important card out of your opponent's hand. I just, it's really not a whole lot of downsides to playing the card in the first place. So, as far as 4-drops go, I know people like, like, Heart Piercer Mana Core for some reason. A lot of people like that card. And obviously you can make a case for Hazaret, but we've got some pretty high CMC stuff in the deck, and I don't think we'll be emptying our hand early enough to play Hazaret. So, with all the other 4-drop options exhausted, I think this is maybe the best one besides Chandra herself. Into the 5-drops here. In the main deck, I'm going to play all 4 copies of Glorybringer because it is the truth. Now, this is your big payoff for all your hard work, you know. All of the magma sprays and incendiary flows and stuff and sweltering suns that you're playing throughout the game are just the build-up to a glory bringer. And if you've left any creatures behind, one exert can take care of that in a hurry. But a lot of times, you won't even exert your glory bringer. It's just like you have the option to if you need to, <laughs> you know. But aside from that, he just comes down with haste, that's crazy, and can end the game in a hurry. And, by the way, worth playing four copies because multiple copies of Glorybringer is dumb. It just feels like the thing was made for red deck wins, for big red, you know, just a five mana flying haste dragon that can also just flame tongue kavu creatures <laughs> whenever it attacks, you know. All of that is tailor-made for a big red deck, and this is definitely, definitely going to be our five drop all the way. Yes, you will see Goblin Dark Dwellers in the sideboard, but I didn't feel like it was worth playing in the main deck over something like Glorybringer. Glorybringer is just absolutely crazy. We will play a whole playset. And to finish off the main deck, we're just going to play one copy of Chandra Flamecaller here, and we'll play another one on the sideboard. This card has seen a little bit of a spike recently because of people playing it in the Pro Tour as a four of in Team or Aetherworks Marvel decks. And in that deck, it's not half bad, and in this deck, even though we have to hard cast it, it's still not so bad, especially considering it's just a silver bullet. We will usually end up just top decking this in the late game, you know, that's where we're going to see it more often than not. And it can just come down and wipe the board. That's pretty cool. Or it can come down on a board that we've controlled up to that point and just put like um, six power worth of haste onto the board every turn while plussing itself. <laughs> That's insane. It's also a form of card advantage, which is again, something we need as much as we can in this deck. So just even though it's six mana, that's pretty high. We're a big red deck. <laughs> we want to get to this end of the curve, you know, and once we do, Chandra's just the absolute best six mana payoff to play in the format. Here's the lands here. We're going to play 25 of them, and that sounds like a lot, but we're trying to get to four, five, and even a six drop on curve here, so got to get all of our drops every time as much as we can. And I know this looks a little weird. This is a weird looking mana base, but Ether Hub is okay. It can help us cast Thought Not Seer. It can obviously produce red mana. It can add a little extra oomph to a Harness Lightning, or Lightning can drop off extra energy for it. So it just isn't as bad as it might look. <laughs> Same thing with Grasping Dunes, you know. Dunes looks kind of bad, but it's a land that can kill a guy, <laughs> so, or at least make it smaller. Like, Grasping Dunes looks kind of weird, but this card is actually a lot better than I would have thought it would have been. Here's the sideboard right here. We're going to play four Release the Gremlins, because if they play a Marvel without being able to spin it yet, we can just jump right on it with a Release the Gremlins as soon as we get a chance to, you know. Um, and this is also good against Heart of Kieran, a card that we're not too great against, believe it or not. So, you know, Release the Gremlins is just a fantastic card for taking out artifacts. We'll play all four here. Another copy of Sweltering Suns, just to finish up the playset, Kari Zev's expertise is in there specifically to grab an Ulamog if they get it down early if we're playing against Ether, um, uh, Team or Aetherworks. Um, which, by the way, just goes to show you that we are very limited when it comes to our options in beating that deck post-sideboard. We don't have a whole lot, but I will play Expertise because I think it's the best steal a guy for a turn effect in the format. Let's us play something for free, and we can swing in with our Ulamog, hopefully, into a naked board. Here are your power rankings right here. Final score of 63, and the key lies in the offense and defense stats here. Note that they are both sevens. That's pretty high scores. 
Always look for offense and defense both being high. That's a telltale sign of a good deck. We've got a really, really good matchup against zombies because we can just kill them with fire. You know, we've got Magma Spray, we've got Incendiary Flow, we've got Sweltering Suns, we've just got all the stuff to just bust zombies up in the early game and make it to where they're exiled and can never come back. So we have a fantastic matchup against zombies, but we do suffer against Etherworks Marvel an awful lot. And we do feel about 40-60 against, against like Marty Vehicles and Green Black Energy. So we're trading off a, a matchup with Marvel. We just aren't good against Marvel. For a great game with decks like Zombies, which are really pop, pop, super popular right now, and we're sacrificing a little bit in matchups against Marty Vehicles and Green Black, but if it's worth it to you to beat Zombies almost every time, this is your deck. And when all is said and done, this deck is not too expensive either. It's not super budget or anything, but it's only about $150 to build on TCG Player. And of course, that's because there's like Chandra's and stuff in the deck. There's plenty of budget options. If you don't want to play Chandra's, you don't want to play $5 Thawd Not Seers or even Glorybringers, you want to bring down the budget a little bit, you can always play things like Sin Prodder or Lath New Hellion. That would be another thing to provide energy or use energy right there. And both of these are just like a quarter on TCG player right now so those are both good deals and solid cards too. Sin Prodder would also be theoretically at least more card advantage which the deck could use and there's even other stuff you know you could just play Goblin Dark Dwellers in the main deck instead of Glorybringer if you wanted to and Dark Dwellers is only like 50 cents on TCG player right now or you get a sweet looking promo of it for like a little less than a dollar right now so that's not bad either and already mentioned this, if you don't have the money to play some of these cards, you could just slap in Combustible Gear Hulk at the top end of your curve. That'll either give you a bunch of cards all at once, or it'll hit the opponent for a bunch of damage all at once. Either one of those things are good for you, and it's only like two bucks on TCG Player. So, there's plenty of budget options for the deck, if you don't have quite the dough. But I'm tapped out on this one for now. Let me know how you felt about it in the comments section. How could we change the deck? How could we make it better, or at least different? Let me know what you did and did not like about this deck down there in the comments, and what are we doing next time? That's important. Well, I'm actually not going to tell you yet. I'm working on a couple of mystery projects here that are coming up in just the next week or so here. But anyway, I'm out of here for now. If you enjoyed the content, remember to like the content. You can also check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash spmtg or follow me on Twitter at spmtgdev. That's a lot of stuff, but please do it all and send me presents. I'm Dev from SBMTG. Thanks for watching, my wizards. I feel like something in my soul is just raising. I got a bounce in my step and I hang itself. New persona, uh, I'm hotter than Arizona. My aura corona, and I'll be sicker than pneumonia. Uh.